Jeff has helped me with a lot of the shows um, in Bushwick when I had the gallery in Bushwick and then some in Lambertville. Um, Jeff lives and works uh, as a painter and uh, he is the art collection. He, he lives and works in New Jersey as a painter and is the art collections photographer for the Princeton University Art Museum. He holds an MFA from the School of Visual Arts in New York and his paintings have been exhibited in Brooklyn, New York City, New Jersey, Los Angeles, Pasadena, and Philadelphia. His collections photography has been published in numerous scholarly art publications. Uh, let me get his work up here. So uh, with that, Jeff, I'll let you uh, take over from there. Thank you, Gary. Um, um, this, I was gonna talk a little bit more about um, kind of the things that motivate me more than actually my work. Uh, but what you're looking at here is, just so you know what it is, uh, is uh, oil and acrylic on panel and it's 14 inches high. And I chose this one because uh, Gary and I showed it at the Chamber of Commerce uh, exhibition. So maybe some of you saw it in person and you'd have a sense of it. Uh, but I'm interested in surface and color and mark making and how the paint uh, actually sits. And which would, you know, leads me to look at a lot of abstract art, but I still like making images. I can't, uh, I can't break myself away from, um, from making images, uh, making readable images. And most of the paintings I've liked over the past decade, I think, um, of my work uh, are images of women. And I've settled with that a long time ago. Um, that's for a different uh, uh, presentation. But, and, uh, you know, as I look back at this picture, uh, you know, one of the things I'm also doing now in the studio is I'm packing things up and putting them away and uh, boxing them up. And, and this is one of those that I don't see very often. And I have to pull them out to look at them. And, you know, when I, when I look at this picture, I actually don't remember how I got to this point. And I don't mean that it's some crazy genius thing, but, but I, when I look at those pale pinks, which I know I think are the last parts of this, uh, I, I don't remember how I got there or how I got to, um, how I got to that, that hair that goes across the forehead. So, um, it's, it's, so I thought I'd talk about the motivations and how I do this. So go to the next slide, please. Oh, there should be one before that. Uh, I might not have it in the right sequence, let me see. Go to the portraits. There, back, back, back. back. Sorry, I thought I had them in that one. Nope, keep going. The four faces. There you go. Okay. All right. So uh, this comes from a 1965 Life magazine, and it's an ad for hair products. And it features all 50 Miss Americas from 1965. I don't care much more about it than that. Um, but I picked these four. Uh, and again, all 50 are on the page because they all represent um, uh, the different things that I'm reacting to. One might be very dark, or my, one might be very light, or the eyes might be more uh, pronounced than others. And I start making my, my work, I'll lay it out quickly in acrylic, and off I go, and then this goes away. Uh, this printed sheet will go away. I might take it out again later, to be honest, if I, if I lose control of the painting, we all know that. And uh, I might go back to it, but generally it's just a starting off point. Uh, so go to the next slide. Go to number three. Was that the uh, Gagosian? Uh, yes, I think so. Okay. So another influence I have, and I picked these up uh, uh, at the museum where I work, and I like books like this. I like to read them. The, uh, the writing is really good. Uh, it's well done. The photography is really good. Uh, go to the next slide, please. So an artist like this, whose work I've seen in person, I'm familiar with, uh, I like to read more about it. The, uh, the, uh, the reproductions in, the, in this magazine are spectacular. 
So, and it's the other part of my life is try is making pages like this and getting artwork to reproduce correctly. Uh, go, go to the next one, please, Gary. Next, that one. Nope. And no, the other one. Sorry. My, my thunder's being stolen here, but go ahead. Um, so here we are. Uh, and I, you know, I love seeing this. And I, I want to point out that this is not like being in Gagosian Gallery and seeing work. I'm not comparing it to that. I'm talking about when you're looking at something online or in a magazine. And I love this. And I, I like, I, I admire both the artwork and I like, and I, I understand, you know, how well it was photographed and how well it was reproduced. Uh, so now go to the next one. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, sorry. But page three of this book is still this. And you might see this in the New York Times too, you know, where you see a big glossy ad. And I'm here to tell you, this page is as interesting to me as the paintings page. Not comparing to the gallery, of course, but when you're looking at the magazine. So, and it's been like this all my life. And I thought, well, you know, that's a young man thinking whatever, but I'm still interested in this kind of thing. And, I, and that's really what my artwork right now is about, is responding to that sort of media and all the influences and all the reasons why I like this and all the reasons why I spend a couple moments looking at this stuff. Um, there's no reason to go into that here. I think it's, it's too long, but go to the next one, please. That one. So this is a little more standard for this series. Um, it's, this one is 16 by 20. It's oil and linen and acrylic underneath. And this is starting to get there as far as abstraction goes. Um, I lay out the face and start to do the work with color and surface and material. And maybe you can see, especially at the top there, um, you can start to see the tooth of the linen. I get interested in things like that. And this one is getting there. It's abstract enough. The, uh, <clears throat> The eyes are still a little photographic for me, but this is where I stopped this one. Um, next slide, please. That's the end, keep going. Next one, okay. Uh, go back to the other one. So this is the other part of my life. Uh, this is where I'm at the museum photographing things. And we have state-of-the-art equipment, we get it all dialed in, we get the, the, the color balances are correct, the profiling's correct, et cetera, et cetera. But you still have this moment where you get to see these great pieces. And this is a, a Boudin from 1891, I think. Um, and you see all the tools that are in, in the software. But while I'm doing all of that, I still get to see this painting in different kinds of light for a couple of minutes. And that's a big influence on me. Go to the next one, the detail. So here it is, this is the corner of it. And I, I end up just sitting there and saying, well, look at the way the reflection was done. Look at the, look at the mark making. And it's, it's, it's a thing that you sort of, uh, that, that kind of uh, fills you during the day. And then when you come home in the studio, it may or may not affect you. But um, I really like kind of having that quick moment with this painting and also, even though we're getting this totally correct because of the technology, I'll also see it in fluorescent light in, in the storage area where it looks dull and flat and not like it should look. And that influences me as well. Hmm. We can go to the next one. So that would be the portrait. Right, the last one. Hold up. That one. So this isn't the best illustration, of, uh, isn't the best reproduction of this one, but this one is my favorite so far. And the reason I like it is because it is so flat. Uh, and it gets, it gets to me that mix of abstraction and, uh, and an il illustrated sort of image. Uh, those yellows and those browns and those grays are really flat. Uh, and it's on a real slick, thin piece of uh, linen. So, this is where I'm expecting to take the direction of this series. And that's about all I had to say. All right, thank you. Thank you. Good. Lauren says, very interesting.